In the Amazonian region of Ecuador, within the expansive jungle, you can find 13 distinct indigenous communities. The history about pottery is very important. We visited two groups of women who are working to preserve their cultural practice of creating handcrafted pottery. These women allowed us to witness their art and learn about cultural significance. So for a little bit of background on the Quechua women, the Quechua women have been passing down their tradition of black clay pottery for countless generations. This practice is specifically reserved for women in Quechua communities, and many hold beliefs that men who attempt the process will lose their fertility and face other burdens. The result is a vibrant space for women to connect, collaborate, and earn their own income. The Quechua women's pottery tradition takes many contemporary forms, including successful independent businesses in urban areas, co-op programs in rural communities, and individual work. What unites all of these forms is the fact that women and tradition are at the center. The pottery process first starts by collecting black clay from riverbeds in the areas where they live. The process of collecting clay is messy. The women often end up covered in clay and mud. They use a machete to pull out the large chunks of clay, process it by hand to remove impurities, and place the clay in a basket, which will then be hauled to the pottery making place. The process of collecting clay is very spiritual. Before taking clay from the earth, the women thank it for allowing them to use it. Each time this is repeated because the spirit recovers the hole they dig the clay out of. Once back, the women take the clay and squash it under their feet using the heel for the hardest impact. This makes the clay more uniform. After completion, the woman will take a chunk of clay and roll it into a long skinny tube. They take a small piece of sud tube and roll it into a ball shape before flattening it into a circle. This piece will form the base of the bowl they are working on. The women then start with the rest of the tube and attach it to the outer edge of the bowl base, molding it into the walls as they go. They work level by level in a circular motion until their bowl has reached their desired height and shape. Then the women use a part of a gourd-like plant that has been formed into a smoothing tool to smooth the outer and inner sides of the bowl. Once the bowl sides have been smoothed out, the women use a small square of dried corn husk to smooth the lip of the bowl. Now that the bowl has been formed and smoothed, it is ready for drying, a process that will take a few days. Once the pots have dried through, Quechua women paint them using three different colors, red, white, and black. The paint colors are different colors of pure clay or sediment collected from riverbanks or other clay mines. The women use small paintbrushes made from human hair, often children's hair, which are often only a few hairs thick to allow for precise and thin lines. As we got to see for ourselves, this process is very tricky. The intricate lines need a steady hand, making it evident why painting is by far the longest part in the process. Once the bowls are painted, they are fired over an open flame. They come out hot and are glazed with the tree resin, which hardens over the pottery as it cools. We didn't just visit a co-op. Also, we met Miriam Vargas at her studio and home in Puyo. Miriam owns a successful independent business selling her pottery and art. She learned from her mother and is also teaching it to her nieces and daughter. Miriam gave us a demonstration on how she made a simple bowl. What was evident in her work was the familiarity and experience. With the quickness and precision of making the bowl, seeing her work gave us awe and admiration for the pottery process and what it takes to be one of the best in the field, with her family's work being displayed at the Chicago Institute of Art. The practice of pottery has been important to indigenous women for centuries. Pottery allows for a way to pass down important depictions and stories through art, while also being something that has practical use for their homes. This art has allowed for women to be able to make an earning as evident with Miriam's shop. Miriam's family success is an inspiration to all indigenous communities that their craft has global importance. As students of the UW Wellbeing through Indigenous Knowledge and Environmental Health, we would like to extend a huge thank you to Miriam Vargas and her family as well as the Canelos Women's Group for allowing us to observe their craft. The artistry and passion we observed during the process of creating these items was beautiful and left a lasting impression on all of us.